And it's time for our second hot topic, and it's good to know that you're still there. Experts warn that CBN Nara float may crash in a short time. Even as President Tinubu meets with the CBN governor to seek, that's the acting governor, to seek urgent intervention to stabilize the Naira and improve liquidity in the market. I've been joined by Mr. Shegu Shokmito, principal partner, Woodrich and Scott Consulting. Good morning to you, Mr. Shokmito, and it's a pleasure to have you join us this morning. Good morning, madam. Um, thanks for having me. Good morning, Nigerians. So you, you, you must have read the details of the meeting that took place between the president and the acting governor of the CBN uh, on Monday. Uh, what's your take of um, that meeting and some of the things that the CBN governor said? Well, I mean, it's, um, it's an admission that um, the, the policy pronouncements um, by this government um, in the last since they've come on board um, is not working you know I mean uh, what 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 the CBN and and beyond before this meeting took place the CBN governor had also come out um, to to admit that our our uh, diaspora remittances was had crashed significantly and that diasporans were um, using non-official um, means of getting their funds to their relatives in the country, you know, and, and that's, that's a very significant admission on his part. And he's, he's said it um, by way of suggesting that this was economic sabotage and that, you know, that there were some strong measures that, were, that, were, that was going to be taken against, um, you know, people or some stringent controls put in place. And I thought that, um, you know, this again uh, buttresses my own um, feeling. What, what I've said consistently um, through the months since all of this started, um, that the government simply may not have a clear idea what they're doing and that um, there may be um, a lack of a thorough um, intellectual rigor with regards to policy formulation, um, you know, uh, on the part of, of, of government agencies and maybe the government itself. Uh, so the president meeting with the CBN governor, one hopes would result in um, a, a careful revision of the outcomes of the policy pronouncement of this government since they came on board and corrective measures being taken. One would hope that that would be the, the outcome of, of, of that meeting. But one would hope that the president would have been um, adequately briefed by the CBN governor and other economic um, experts and advisors that uh, the president has access to uh, with regards to the dangers that, that lie ahead. Um, um, and, and one must also not forget that the president is not exactly um, a greenhorn when it comes to economic matters. He's, he's, he's a qualified accountant. He is not alien to um, financial matters. He's not alien to economic analysis. You know, he should know. Uh, but of course, <laughs> we must also remind ourselves that he is also a politician. And um, a lot of times when um, political um leaders make decisions uh, they don't they don't always make those decisions uh purely on the merit of the um economics uh, uh behind behind those those issues sometimes political considerations might come in and i think maybe that's what we're seeing um i, I would only um strongly advise uh, the president and his um, advisors and his handlers um that you know, the time for politics is far gone. And we we need to um, hunker down, roll up our sleeves, and look at what is happening in the country uh, on the back of the policy pronouncements um, that this administration has made across board. You know, I can reel out um, a number of policy changes that have been made, and it's very clear that they're not working. Um, so we, we need to we need to step back, look at why they're not working, look at what we need to do very quickly 
before we before we go into tailspin right now what we're seeing is the beginning of a careering out of control of a vehicle that is driving at very high speed mm -hmm. and we all know what happens if you're driving at 160 kilometers per hour and you and you fly over just a small bump on the road there is a possibility that the car will go into a tailspin um, um, spin several times, somersault, and, you know, kill the, the occupants. And that's what we're seeing right now. I have said repeatedly on air, on as many platforms as I've had access to, that the president needs to slow down. You know, um, the cabinet is not in place yet. Um, the ministers have been screened and approved. They haven't been assigned with portfolios yet. Um, it's not a time to make... Um, um, very uh, far-reaching, profound policy pronouncements the way the president has done has done um, in the last two months. And Those again, policy pronouncements again, ought to be uh, preceded by very thorough, um, exhaustive, extremely detailed analysis of um, where we are, where we'd like to be, how we're going to get there, the potential fallouts of you know uh, make those policy pronouncements and how to mitigate the impact of that fallout you know on the people we have to remember that governance is first and foremost about the people when you talk about um economics um whether you're talking about exchange um, foreign exchange uh, prices or exchange rates whether you're talking about pms prices whether you're talking about education at the end of it all it's about the people and what happens to the citizens of a country. So that must be at the back of our minds as we address all of these issues. And that has to be the overriding concern um, that the president uh, should should um, carry along with him as, 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 as these decisions are being made and, and rolled out. Yeah, yet again, uh, we have been promised new policies by the acting uh, CBN governor uh, with this meeting he had with the president He's saying that new policies are going to be introduced in a few days' time that would adversely affect the speculators that he's blaming for the scarcity of FX. Look, the scarcity of FX is not um, the result of speculation. Of course, there will always look. There is no market in, in you know anywhere in the world where you would not have some measure of speculation. Speculation is a, is is a, is an intrinsic. Um, and maybe you could even argue an important part of uh, market making anywhere in the world in any type of market, whether you're talking about foreign exchange markets um, or you're talking about commodity markets or, or you know, financial markets, whatever it is, speculators will always speculate. You can't blame speculation for failure of um, um, uh, price control uh, mechanisms. You can't blame speculators for failure um, of, uh, of a proper management of the of the factors that control the flow uh, forward and backwards of demand and supply in any market. It's not about speculation; it's about policy, right? And 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 it's about time that the central bank governor and the president understand this and relate with the issues on the basis of this. What is so when the the CBN governor says that. There will be you know, new policy initiatives to address speculation. I'm worried because I think that we do not need more controls. I think we need less controls. You know, so that statement sounds as if we're going to have some more stringent measures introduced, maybe some sort of um, penalties um, if you are caught you know, um, in the speculation or in maybe a round tripping. Uh, they'll probably target the banks because you know the banks, um, the bureau de change, and other financial um, um, player, player, other players in the financial markets who are authorized dealers are the ones that the CBN has direct control over. They don't have direct control over you and I, or um, um, uh, organizations, large corporate organizations that access the markets, you know, for foreign exchange. So they'll probably target the banks with uh, various potential punitive measures if they are found in quotes, um, uh, aiding speculation and all of that. I would suggest that this would be a problem, this would be a mistake. What I think we need, amongst other things, um, um, is to look 
very critically to, to critically examine um, the the control policies that we have in place from the CBN to the to the players in the financial markets, especially the foreign exchange markets. Um, um, the there's an exchange control um, department in the Central Bank of Nigeria, um, and they come out with circulars, you know, and and other policy documents that that define the rules, the 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 the, the rules and regulations um, that players must follow in accessing the markets, right? Mm. Um, so, for example, in terms of importation into the country, before you can import um, goods or services, there are forms that you need to fill. There's a form M, there's a form A, there's an NXP, um, form Q uh, for small business, for small businesses and all of that. You know, um, these forms must be completed and must be approved by your bank before you can access uh, um, uh, foreign exchange in, in, in the official window, if um, that's what you want to do. Um, if you want to repatriate your funds, uh, when you bring investment in, You've got to um, get a capital importation certificate approved uh, by the central bank. When you're repatriating your funds or your profits, you have to get approval from the CBN. Um, and there are a lot of documentation, documentary requirements that follow that approval. My own suggestion is that we need to look at all of these controls mm -hmm. and reduce mm -hmm. them to the barest minimum. To the, to, you know, you can't have a totally... A, a market that is totally free of regulation and totally free of controls. And we also have to understand that there's a difference between regulation and controls, right? There's a difference between data collection and data gathering um, for policy formulation purposes, uh, for regulation purposes, and controlling every single activity and every single movement that happens in the market. The controls that we've had in place, we've had them for decades. I mean, for goodness sake, I, I have been in the financial sector for uh, the better part of 30 years. And I tell you that even as a young banker, some of the policies that we had in place when I was a young banker are still there today, 30 years later. Um, the world has changed. Mm. The world has moved on. The world is a bigger place. It's the, the borders are shrinking and sometimes have completely disappeared, especially in terms of financial flows. So the, the, the amount of control that you can put in place, um, you've got to be careful about how you go about it. Yeah, you, you're just bringing me to my next question, which is how much confidence do we have in this present Central Bank of Nigeria of ours? I mean, some of the problems we're having today is as a result of the activities and policies of the Central Bank. And, and some analysts are predicting a black swan may be upon Nigeria soon as a result of the debt of the central bank, the, the debt that the central bank is owing some big U.S. companies, should they be asking for their money in, in the nearest future? Well, I mean, um, um, foreign borrowings, foreign debt um, obligations don't necessarily get called in, you know, um, on a whim. Um, usually that would happen if there's any concern about uh, the ability of um, a sovereign um, nation uh, to fulfill its debt obligations and typically that rarely happens um, we've seen it happen in a number of occasions you know with greece and a couple of other countries that have gone into uh, some, some sort of financial meltdown but it's not something that happens a lot um, so the, 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 the chances that we would have some of these debt obligations called in all of a sudden that will then put our foreign reserves under the kind of pressure pressure that could um, result in a financial crisis for, for Nigeria is uh, the, the chances of that happening are very slim. Um, talking about uh, confidence in the central bank, um, the central bank of Nigeria, um, uh, unfortunately, in my view, uh, has tended over the years, especially under the, um, the stewardship of um, the suspended governor, um, emphasized involvement in areas um of the markets and in areas of the economy that perhaps they they should have allowed other agencies of government to to handle while they focused on monetary policy formulation monetary monetary policy monitoring um and all of that um so in terms of confidence well 
the central bank is the central bank. Um, they represent government, they're the monetary policy um, arm of the government. And I don't think that we necessarily have a crisis of confidence, confidence with them. I think what we just need to see is uh, the CBN being a bit more um, um, broad-minded in its approach to how policies are formulated. And I was saying um, that what the central bank needs to do to, to deal with this crisis that we are, we are headed into very fast is to look at the, um, the, the controls that they have in place and review them. And I think that this needs to happen as a matter of urgency. You know, what we are facing right now is a demand and supply problem. Uh, there is simply way more demand in the official markets than there is supply. And there is a, 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 a difficulty of accessing funds in the official market, not only as a result of a lack of supply, but also as a result of the, the stringent measures and, and, and policies and you know the conditions that you have to meet in order to play in that market. And that is driving uh, people to the parallel market, which is widening the, the divergence between the official rates and the parallel market rates, which will eventually push you know, prices in the parallel market, exchange rates in the parallel market above the one one thousand naira to the dollar um, um, range very soon. And because a large chunk of our economy still operates in the informal sector and still accesses foreign exchange, much needed um, foreign exchange that we depend so much on from the parallel markets, the impact of that on on the rest of the economy, the multiplier effects, the ripple effects, and the domino effects um, is it, dangerous. We could be heading into a hyper hyperinflation territory in no time at all if something is not done to shift um, to bring in supply into the official markets. And I'm saying that one of the things that the CBN needs to do as a matter of urgency is to review the entire gamut of um, um, secular um, rules and regulations guiding the foreign ex accessing foreign exchange markets in Nigeria from the official authorized dealers. The rules are too many, the controls are too much, they need to be relaxed. Why? So that people that have access to liquidity can bring their money into the country knowing that when they need to take it back out, that they will be able to do so. The reasons, one of the reasons that there is a constraint of supply in the foreign exchange market outside of the fact that we probably don't export enough is that is is that the other sources of supply are being stifled, are being stifled, and a lot of these players are being pushed into the unofficial markets, mm. and the economy as a whole is not benefiting from this. So yeah. the CBN needs to look at the issue of exchange controls so that we can attract more money, more supply into the into the foreign exchange markets. Yeah. Thank you, you know, so it, much. It, 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 Thank it, you so much, Mr. Yeah. Shopita. Time will not allow us to continue, but I, I love that you're stopping at a point where you're giving very strong advice to the CBN. Thank you so much for your time uh, today on The Breakfast. Thanks for having me. Mr. Shagun Chopito, Principal Partner, Woodridge and Scott Consulting has been my guest on the second hot topic. And it's time for us to end the program. And before we leave, I leave you with our quote of the day. Science knows no country because knowledge belongs to humanity and is the torch which illuminates the world. And that's according to Louis Pasteur. I am Maureen Menonwezike, thanking you for being a part of the show this morning. Join us tomorrow for another episode.